Hey, everybody. Welcome back. It's Workers and Resources. Hope you're having a great day today. We got some resources being taken over to our agriculture place here. Uh, these buildings are a lot bigger than uh, they appear when you're above them. I mean, just look at the size of that compared to the trucks and stuff. I just I just love getting right down in here and just looking at the models and the details. It's, it's really cool. In any case, today's video... Uh, we're going to make a couple of changes. This is a major change. We're going to make it like I, I want to expand this and really just talk about sort of how this agriculture area is going to be assorted. But before we get into that, I have another change I need to make all the way over here. And so we're going to look at our nuclear setup. And we need to make a modification to how this works because of how these facilities work. So these are a little bit different than a lot of other facilities because two of these buildings, possibly three, actually maybe three of these buildings, yeah, uh, they create container type outputs uh, and they take container type inputs. Um, and that changes things a little bit. We have the v space for vehicles and containers, large and all that stuff. But um, the problem with this nuclear setup right now is that I don't have a, a good way to push and pull the resources. So we're going to talk about nuclear again and uh, sort of how each one of these buildings are going to intake and output. And ultimately, I think we're not going to be able to have a truckless assortment here, but I don't think it'll be that big of a deal. So we'll walk you through that uh, as this works. If it's possible to do this with a train, I'd love to do that too. I think the first thing I have to do is I need to redo, or I, I should so say reset where it's located, the nuclear fabrication plant. As a bit of a recap as to what each of these buildings do, because I know a lot of you guys are new, I don't want you to be lost. The nuclear fabrication plant is entirely based, uh, it's gonna take in a container type resource, which is why it's hooked up to this. And then it's going to output a container type resource. Uh, and then when I say container type resource, I mean a resource that is that has to be stored in a container and it has to be loaded onto a flatbed or onto a, a flat car, uh, etc. Basically, it's a resource that gets transported the same as vehicles would get transported uh, in this game, like on flatbeds, ships, etc. So the resources that this building consumes is a container type resource and produces is a container type resource. But here's the thing, this building, when they cr create their resources, and this, this affects the conversion plant as well. So we'll open up both of these. The conversion plant is going to take the uranium oxide and produce UF6. UF6 is a container type resource. Container type resources do not get pushed to storage automatically. They can be pulled from storage automatically, but not pushed. So in this case, this uh, storage container, the conversion plant is not gonna push UF6 to this container. But if we can get UF6 to this container, this building will pull it in to use it. Likewise, this is going to create nuclear fuel. It is not going to push it to storage, back to storage. But if we can get the fuel here, the power plant will pull it in, okay? So it's basically a push only. However, if I can take nuclear fabrication, which I'm going to rebuild now, <laughs> if I can take this, and I'm gonna also cancel this line because it's pointless. We're not gonna be using it, so I'm gonna cancel that. If we can get the nuclear fuel that we're making connected directly to the power plant, the power plant will pull it in from the storage that's in this source because it will pull in resources it doesn't push them so in other words if i can get the conversion plant directly connected to the uh uh nuclear fabrication then it's still truckless the problem i'm going to have with this though is that most likely i'm going to be producing this faster than this is going to consume it and as a result of that, I do want an inter intermediary container where I can store it. So, how are we gonna do this? Nuclear fabrication is going to be directly connected to the power plant so that that resource can be directly pulled in to the power plant, okay? Now, if for some reason the power plant fills up and it's no longer needing to pull it, then we'll just build up a stock of it. And it doesn't matter if we're building up a stock of it because the purpose is to provide power. So if this storage is full, 
then we're going to have solid power all the time. Um, and so this can fill up and then feed it. And then that will cause this to fill up. And then the whole system might lock down to the point where we don't need as many workers, which is fine because the end result is still here. And if we do produce excess nuclear fuel, we talked about it earlier with economics, we can sell the excess fuel as well. So there's a possibility to do that. All right. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to have this facility here, this nuclear fuel fabrication facility. I would like to have this be close enough to where it can connect both to that storage and also to this power plant. Um, so if I could maybe get this to be... Uh, I don't know, like in an area, kind of like, uh, I was kind of hoping it could be, mm, can I connect it to storage or not? I, I don't want it to be connected on that side. I'd like it to be, well, maybe I could do it like this. Maybe I could do it like, oh, there might be a spot where I can do it here. Which isn't quite where I wanted it to be, but I wonder... Could I go like this? If I bring you like right up in here, like super close, let's level this out really quick. I just want to see if this will work. If we pop this in. Can I get a factory connection like this? Cannot. Uh, okay, maybe I can if I do this. Uh, it looks to me like that road might be in the way. Oh, if the road isn't in the way, will you work? Let's see. If the road is not there, you still won't connect there. Okay, I need to I need to position this. The goal is to have this directly connected here, but I still want it to be here so that when I implement my truck system to get the fuel into this storage facility, uh, it can still do it. Um, and we can still store the access here, and then it can be pulled in from this. So give me a second. Let me position this. Yeah, this looks like it's pretty good, actually. So it's a pretty solid connection. So we're going to place this. Whoops. Hey, I need to level out the land a little bit here, don't I? Thankfully, I've got that nifty construction office with one excavator. Okay, so we're going to build it here instead. And this, again, allows me to directly connect this so that when this outputs the nuclear fuel, again, it can be pulled from storage. This is going to be storage too. So it will be pulled in directly. We won't need to transport it with a truck. So the UF6. I need to get roads, please. Yep. So the RF, the, the, uh, the UF6 is going to need a truck connection. Okay. Now we have this road and it's still there. It's still connected. Everything's fine here, but we also have a rail here too. We cannot enter into this facility to, to get it with a rail. It, there is no rail connection to this building. So we have to transport it with a truck. There's no other way to do it. Uh, so we're going to need to remove temporarily a little bit of rail here. I'm thinking right in front of this. Maybe we go about like maybe that much. Because it's too close. I can't make the connection. And then we'll have this road go about like, let's say like that. And then the rail needs to go around just a little bit. Might be able to go about like that. Yep. And then down. All right. We're going to take this back, actually. And uh, we're going to have this be a little bit away from the road. That's going to allow me to, I think, curve it a little cleaner uh, around the side of the building. So uh, we'll just have that happen. So let's get the road to wrap around the uh, nuclear plant. Now we're going to need cooling pipes to come off the side of this. So I don't want to get super close to it. So I don't want to, I, I want to have flexibility with the cooling pipes. So I think I'm going to come out about this far. Yeah. And we'll come out about this far and go that way. And then for the train tracks, I, I think I want to hug this side of the tracks, but uh, eh, it's probably easier just to go around. Ooh, boy. Uh, not like that, though. How about we get the track to go like this? And then we hook you up like this, can we? Maybe if I pull this back just a little bit more. Not quite. There's a there's a there's a point here where this will work, dang it, and I want it to be nice and clean. There we go. This will work just fine. Okay, so we're gonna wrap the train 
through here and then around and out. And then this train is going to go that way, right? Uh, we're just going to have it go... I think we'll have it go out there for now. And then there's going to be a little town over nearby here that's going to sort of serve as a constant labor force. We're going to bring in more workers from over, from over there too. But we'll have a localized town over here that can serve as a more constant labor force to where they are in charge of keeping it operating to where everyone else is now coming in to keep it operating better. Okay. So we're going to have a passenger train in here too at some point. Now let's talk about road connections. And uh, again, we, we're going to need a truck basically to load up the UF6 on a flatbed. And that truck is just going to go around, drop it off here. That's it. That's the route from here to here. At that point, this will pull it in. Then this will feed it, or sorry, this will get it pulled in from the power plant. And then the power plant will produce nuclear waste, which again, cannot be transported directly from the power plant by any other means other than a flatbed. We cannot, it won't, it won't automatically output somewhere. So we're going to need a, uh, a flatbed truck for that too. And I'm thinking we load it into a facility or not really a facility but we, we maybe load it to a shipping yard like over here and we have the trucks take it from here and into a container storage area at a shipping yard and i don't exactly know i, I saw it working though we need one for here harbor for containers and vehicles and it I, I thought it i thought we saw a spot where it would go in like right over here but i don't remember where exactly it was oh right there there he is Yep, so we can have this built too. I'm gonna have to level out the ground quite a bit here. That's gonna take a long time. <laughs> uh, it is, yep. But I'm gonna hold this down until it's done. And then I'll probably have to do a bit more terraforming around the land. Uh, I don't know why it needs to be paused. Uh, I'm gonna do a bit more terraforming around the land too, just to kind of smooth it out. But this is gonna be basically the start of us using ships. And we're gonna load the nuclear waste into this and send it off to the Americans. <laughs> uh, you guys can deal with it. We don't need to deal with it, okay? Uh, and then, you know, it'll it'll get stored here as a, as a permanent storage solution until the ships arrive. So we don't even need to start worrying about ships until way later when this place gets a bit full. Then we'll buy a little ship and... Uh, well, you don't even need a little ship, but we'll, we'll buy a ship, a uh, relatively inexpensive boat, and then we'll have that boat send it out. Um, and then this boat will also be in charge of shipping out any extra nuclear fuel that we produce. If we are overproducing fuel relative to how much we're consuming, there's a good chance that we will be in the beginning because the power plant will not need to produce as much power. Therefore, it will not need to consume as much fuel. And because of that, we might be overproducing certain elements. Things like the UF-6, for example, we might be overproducing that. We'll either need to get another nuclear fuel fabricator, which I can totally do. Um, that's, that's totally a valid way to do it, so we can make even more fuel um, and then ship that fuel out because it's worth a lot of money. Like, that fuel is worth so much. Um, it, it, I don't think it's the best way to make money because, you know, like, if you're shipping out airplanes, for example, those those are worth like a million plus each, you know, like you can make maybe two or three planes a year. And, and that's like 2 million bucks a year or 4 million bucks a year if you're selling two or three of them. So, I mean, that's probably the best way to make money in this game. But nuclear fuel is just something we already have the logistics set up for, right? It's something that we can just have. Uh, and that's, that's really nice. So I can smooth this terrain out a little bit. Oh, I'm pretty sure I have a... Free bulldozer? Oh, I need a free bulldozer, you say. Oh my gosh, I can't believe we don't have a free bulldozer anywhere. Look at that, a bulldozer. <laughs> so let's get this uh, smoothed out just a little bit. Just need to take it down a notch so that we can start working with it with things around. And we're just gonna kind of smooth it out a little bit with this bulldozer. And hopefully that means we can do things like connecting pipes to it, connecting rails to it, etc. Um... Yeah, we're going to need to smooth out a little bit more, but at least we can feasibly get a rail connected to this, which is what we want. Um, so we could we could have it sent from, like, use this same train, right? This train can come in, 
right? It's going to come in with passengers and maybe drop them off right here. I'm thinking that's the solution too. Uh, we could have a passenger car alongside cargo car in the same train. So we have one train that makes this trip all the time and it takes passengers with it. That's that's valid. Um, so we might, we might want to do that. If I was going to do that, I don't know if I need the full train platform. I think the small one might be good enough because again, we're going to have a permanent... Uh, sort of settlement kind of way over here and we can use buses to bring them in um, I mean the train is maybe more efficient yeah I mean, the train might be better we have the train stop here pick up people and then I don't know it's it's something that's up in the air but I'm leaving this spot open in case I want to do that because this spot if passengers are stopped here they can walk to any place that we need them to work even over here uh, at that point so we're gonna kind of leave that open so I think this takes care of the bulk of what we uh, needed to fix in terms of the gaps. Um, one thing we might want to look at, though, here is that this facility requires chemicals, too. Because this one, let's take a look at the, the buildings again, right? There's This needs chemicals to produce uh, uranium oxide and chemicals, but so does this one. And it's going to produce, it's going to consume even more chemicals to, to make that fuel fabrication. This was where we were going to drop off the chemicals, but now, because this is so far away, we're not going to be able to do that. If we're going to make another fuel fabricator, if we were going to do another one, it could fit right here, and it can connect. I see it flashing. I know that it can connect. I've seen it. I've seen it happening. Uh, it's possible. I guess where I'm getting at here, here there it is. It's nope. Sorry, it's over here. This it needs to connect to this and that, right? So it can do something like this, right? Move that rail, and it's totally possible. Um, so I'm leaving that option on the table. But one thing I could do is trust forklifts, right? Forklifts cannot move containers, though. So it, forklift network will not help me in bringing in the UF6 that we're transporting with a truck to this facility um, because they cannot they cannot do it. It's too heavy. Um, so ideally it would have to be here. However, this leaves this building with no chemicals. You could say maybe the truck could also bring chemicals there, but I, I don't want to do that. I want to limit that truck as much as possible. So I think one of the things I might end up doing here is having two delivery points for chemicals. The train can come through here, drop off chemicals, uh, at this point, an, another another uh, storage. So, like we do, we do uh, something like this. Yeah, something like this where they're connected together. It has to be pretty close, but the hope is that we can get it to. Mm, it can't auto connect here though. Oh yeah, there's no auto connections with that, huh? Okay, let me play around with positioning on this again, and I will be right back. All right, so I've been moving things around a lot. I've determined that uh, without really just restructuring everything that we're doing, which I could do, but I'm not going to, uh, there's really not going to be an easy way to get extended um, chemical storage to go in here automatically and still have the ability to create more fuel later if we decide that we want to, which we might, because again, we're gonna be overproducing UF6 most likely. So um, I think probably what we'll do is I'm gonna have this facility as close as I can here, right about here. Uh, this is gonna allow at least this much to be fed directly, uh, I think right about like that uh like that it's going to allow at least some chemicals to be fed directly with this setup but if i ever want to expand and make more i am going to need to make some concessions here i think and uh we're going to need a rail so this rail is now going to go around and connect to here let's make it a bit more rounded because i like the way it looks when it's all round like this uh, let's go like that. Yeah, a little bit more casual line in there. Um, so this is going to be basically the route. The, the train comes in. Let's, let's finalize this too. The train comes in. It will have chemicals on it. And uh, it will bring... It will come into here, right? I think what we might do 
is we can have another facility. Well, actually, we can use this train to do it. If we're going to do additional nuclear fabrication, we can do it over here in a facility that's about here. And this can be where it would be located. It would have direct access to those chemicals, right? Um, but then we won't have... We won't have shared storage, though. That is a difficult thing. Because I would like... I would like these two warehouses to be connected, too. And that's not going to happen with the way we have this. Uh, I think we can... I think I can reposition this to make that work. Yeah, it actually should be like this. Not like it was. It should be like this. So, uh, this is the warehouse and now this serves as an, ex as an extension of that warehouse so when we deliver chemicals we're gonna bring that train through here and around deliver it to this one this will then serve as an overflow but we'll we'll have it here right um and then if we we need to distribute it even further we can have the train stop here pick it up from here and drop it off in here i guess that's a solution too right we have chemicals brought we say load more and then bring it here it's not that's not too bad I, I don't know we'll we'll see how that goes because like there's no reason for this to have chemicals it's an overflow i don't know whatever we'll we'll see i want them connected anyway and then we'll bring the, the train the rail around like this okay so that hooks up the chemicals directly here so this is all done but if we want to expand right we have the ability now to place another of the nuclear fuel fabricators here to connect to the chemicals directly here and then what we could also do is have another one of these flatbeds and the train could then bring, you know, pick up the access that's here, pick up one or two of these and bring them over to another one where it can then be loaded. So there is, there's some flexibility there with the, with the, with the rails. And, uh, I think we'll be all right there, but as long as the core is done and it's mostly truckless, um, we're good there. So here is this, and then we need a place for the waste to go. And, uh, it's not super critical yet, but the waste, we're going to have the, this, uh, road head all the way over here and i think it's going to just round and go in right there and then uh this can connect to that road like so and then this road can come around and i think wrap like this to that road there okay good now this is where all the power lines are going to connect as well so this is going to be kind of a messy area that's why i've left a little bit more room but i may want to leave even more room yeah, I think I do. I want to leave just a little bit more room here. So we're going to have that wrap still, but it's not going to wrap until it gets to maybe... I think so. We'll leave just a little bit more room. We'll put it over here. Okay, good. And then I'm going to just build that road because it's, it's expensive. Never mind. I'm going to let the helicopters and uh, construction yards and stuff do their thing. That's what we're going to do instead. Yeah. Okay, so uh, this is done. We're good. Uh, I just needed to make that modification. All right, let's talk about some bigger changes we got to make because there's there's a lot of changes happening here. Uh, not everything needs to be changed, but like more than half of this is going to need help. Okay, let me talk you through two problems that we're going to have here. We'll start with the smaller one first. Storage is... I, I, I've learned some things, and that's what I'm going to explain right now. Storage is can have resources connected to them as extensions, uh, which is the reason why I added the meat storages to the warehouse. However, the extensions that they provide cannot be for resources that they themselves do not support. In other words, I cannot have meat connected directly to a warehouse and extend it to where meat can be stored uh, in the warehouse or at least accessible via the rail connection or the road connection for that warehouse. Effectively, this will not work. Let me show you. Over here, I've added a meat storage to this. It's got 72... I mean, there's a lot of meat happening here with all these forklifts, which are awesome still. Uh, but they're not accessible here. I have a train that I've purchased. If I can find it. It's right here. It was waiting for someone else to go. This train, its job is to take food, clothing alcohol as well as meat from this area and over there and eventually electronics too but we're not doing our own electronics yet that's its job it has three cars one for food one for clothing one for alcohol but it also has 
this white car here, which is refrigeration. And the refrigeration car is supposed to haul 24 tons of meat on its destination. The problem is this train cannot access that meat. The only way to do it is with this very specific building, the cargo train station. You've got to have this to access meat on a train. It is the only thing that allows trains to access meat directly. So that's how we're going to have to do it. The cargo train station does not have storage of its own. And it also has less connection ports. So we're going to have to rethink how we do this area. But there's two things that absolutely must happen. The meat storages are not going to be able to get positioned here. So we're going to remove them. The second thing is, most likely I have to move this too. In fact, I'm going to just go ahead and commit to it right now. We need to move this as well. The reason for that is because originally the intention behind this was to make it close enough to the city to where it can be easily accessed and have connections here so that it could have all this stuff connected to it. But since the meat can't go here anymore, I need to move this. And I'm going to move this over here. But before I move it here, because I have to delete this road and redo it, before I do that, though, I have stuff in here already. This pass-through, this extension, it kind of distributes the stuff evenly between the two of them, and therefore I have stuff over here. I don't really want to lose the stuff I've made. So I went ahead and repurposed a couple of the distribution trucks to be over here at the road vehicle depot. And we're just going to have this thing load up everything there and unload everything here. And that's going to be the job for these trucks. We're just going to have that be a thing. Uh, so let me just go ahead and say load and unload. And then I'm going to wait just a little bit longer just to kind of get these trucks a little bit more spaced out to reduce the risk that they're going to conflict with each other. That should, that should do it. Okay. Obviously, they're going to have to refuel and there's time to load, unload. So that's going to make them probably have conflicts, but I'm hoping to spread them out enough to where I don't have to deal with it. It's inevitable, but hey, I'm doing what I can. So that's the first thing. This is going to have to be redone, which means this rail is going to have to be redone, redone too. We're going to spend some rubles to make this stuff happen. Um, maybe not directly today, but like I've got, this is the reason why I'm making profit. I make profit so that this can happen. And I'm just going to delete this train track all the way up to here, I think. The second thing that's going to have to happen, since I'm going to be building in this zone, is these electrical wires all have to go. So we're going to take and get rid of... Uh, you know what? This one can stay. It's across the track already. But the high voltage one is going to have to be deleted at least to here. And then I'm going to pull you to this side of the track. And then take you on a trip over to at least here. Yeah, wherever you don't make a new pole, right about there. And then can you connect here? Direct. Thank you. Spend that. Uh, the second thing probably is a little bit of this medium voltage stuff has to go. I'm not entirely sure where this stuff will end up being. But I'm pretty confident that if I go on the other side of the tracks with this, that it will be out of the way. So I'm going to put it here cross the track go to here and then come straight down and over i'm pretty sure that connects everything but keeps it out of the way this is the ideal one truck loading while the other one's unloading then they swap places do the same thing until this thing is empty and this thing is full problem though i think is going to be that this is going to fill up and we we won't be able to have it all um so Let's make sure that we're distributing. I don't think you actually have this added. No, you don't. I want you guys... Yeah, go. So these trucks are now going to get shoved into the mix too, which is unfortunate, but it is what it is. Uh, and uh, they're going to be pulling stuff out of here and distributing it where it's supposed to go. That's the purpose of that distribution center is to do that. Um, thankfully, I think these trucks, they have lower capacity. Oh, boy. Yeah, no. Okay. You, train... No, go back. Just go back. Oh, wait, do I? Hang on. I messed up with the signals when I got rid of this. Yeah. Uh, like that. Yep. Off you go. Yeah, this is the reason why I want that road cargo station. The trucks don't have to wait for each other. 
four trucks at a time can access that, it's a lot better than having all this happen. All right, hopefully the other trucks pull enough stuff out of here that makes that worth it, but I don't know. Do we have a road connection with... Oh, that's so far away, and that road's not even done. I was going to say we could just export it. You know? Like, we could take the stuff out of there. Hey, now there's a plan. I got a, I got a plan, all right? I've got... Uh, <laughs> you get it. You get it. Don't lie. Um, we're going to have... I'm going to have this truck repurposed back to here. Um, this train... Where's my, my train that's been doing this stuff? We're going to make a modification to the existing train that's already running this. Um, I shouldn't have gotten rid of that rail yet, but this I didn't have this plan until now. So let's pull this to the side. We're going to have... We're going to go like this. Build that. It's going to be an eight, 8 gram, but it'll be worth it. And then what I want this train to do now is instead of loading stuff here, you're not going to do this anymore. You are now going to go to the border, which is all the way over here. And you're going to unload everything at the customs house. And your job now is to do that. That's That's your job now. So, um, just, just for now. And then afterwards we can, you know, we can assess your fate, uh, as we build out the new thing and get it sorted out, then this train's route will then become the cargo station instead of the warehouses directly. Uh, so I'm going to delete this stop and we're going to have you go to this stop now. That's where you're headed. You're going to unload everything you have. And then I want you to come over to this warehouse right here. New stop here. And you are going to load everything. Yep. Load everything and unload everything. That's your new job, train. So go do it. You know? And then this truck, you've done it. You had a valiant effort. You've done really great things. Thank you. I'm going to have you repurposed over here now. So that's your thing now. So we're gonna delete the stops. You're just you're just gonna belong to this depot now. And there's probably another truck in here that has a route, but I don't know if it really matters. Like, I don't think it'll actually do anything. I think once it arrives at the depot, it stops having a route. I think. Oh well. In any case, now we're just gonna export this. So we're not gonna lose the stuff, we're gonna sell it. I, I like that better. I mean, I don't think the export will necessarily pay for the cargo station, but it might. All right. The last thing, and this is the biggest change. So I'm kind of saved this for later. Uh, and it probably won't be done in this video, but we'll see. I want to walk you through the process. So after all sorts of research and reading your comments, it's been determined that these grain storages as passive storages will not um, overflow like I wanted them to, like I thought they would. Um, so we won't get grain loaded throughout all of these or crops loaded throughout all of these. So we have a couple of problems to solve. And this is, I'm not winging this. I've spent probably a good 12 hours fidgeting with spacing on everything I want to build in this area to try to come up with what the plan can be and what's feasible. I have not solved all of the problems I've run into yet. So this is still a work in progress. But I think this part here is at least somewhat done. And I want to share with you sort of what the plan is uh, going forward here. So the plan, it's going to seem really like, oh, okay, that's the plan. Yeah, the plan is to do this. <laughs> None of these things can stay where they are. None of these things are in a good spot. And I'll walk you through as to why they're in a bad spot in a little, in a little second here. Um, this needs to go. Bye. And all of this road is going to go too. I think most likely the road is going to stay, but we're going to have it closer to this grain storage. Um, but for now, this is this is gone. And I'm going to pause it really quick because I'm disconnecting power. So all of this needs to go away too. And I think right up, yeah, right up to there. Um, this can go. And we're going to have to rebuild it 
over here like this. Like that. Okay. And then I'm going to expand to the a slightly higher voltage. It was these ones before. We're going to go to this one. And I'm going to have this be... Uh, I don't want it to be right up against that. I think I need it to be up against the road here. But then it needs to be on this side of the street. And it needs to hug the street because there's actually something that's something pretty cool that can happen through here. Um, and I'll probably show you that in this video. And then most of this will get taken place in the next video since this is already pretty long. Um, but now that this is connected to power... Um, no, it's not. Hang on. And now it is. So now that this is connected to power, there we go, uh, things can continue, okay? That train, it was right here. What happened? What did you, what did you do? Where'd that train go? Wait, my meat train, my food train. Where did, where did you go, food train? It's a really fast train, too. Am I just seeing things, or was, did I see a passenger train? Could have swore that was my meat train. Hmm. Maybe it wasn't. There's a lot of trains. Uh, okay, I just wanted to see if it was exporting, but we'll, we'll see. Is that 19%? That's pretty good. Um, maybe, it, maybe it did. Maybe it just loaded it really fast. Okay, so how is this going to work? Couple of problems. All right, road connections are the biggest issue. I want to have lots of grain storage so that the ver a variety of different buildings can access and use it. I also need road connections because this distribution is responsible for half of these crops and distributing it to the buildings that need it. The other distribution center is responsible for the other half doing the exact same thing. So we need road connections. And that's the biggest challenge with this is trying to figure out how to do that. It might make more sense to have each individual production building have its own connected grain storage. And I kind of like that idea, like a lot. Um, it's been something I've been playing with and spacing. The only issue I'm running into, and that's the problem I have to solve, is how to get them working all together, spaced out for the forklift network, because we're gonna have two slaughterhouses, uh, four different meat storages, two cargo stations, by the way. Uh, I'll walk you through that in a bit. Um, unless I already have. I don't remember. I've. This is like run number two at explaining this right now because I was stuttering like crazy the first time I tried. Um, so I, I don't know if I walked you through that or not, but two cargo stations, one that's got meat connected for road connections, the other that's dedicated for trains. Uh, and that train can take that meat and distribute it to all the different towns we have because we have a town over there we need to bring meat to the college town to bring meat to Charlebins is going to take care of its own and then uh we've got uh this other one i don't know what these other towns are called yet i haven't named them but that one that we just connected over there uh and then we have of course uh guarded stali we need to distribute that's what this one right here will take care of but then we also have our capital city that will need meat and the nuclear city that will need meat so another cargo station for that. And there's going to be a dedicated meat train that has nothing but meat. So, uh, yeah, let me let me lay out a grid here for this. And because uh, we're running out of time in this video, unfortunately. And I'm going to lay out sort of like a grid of what I've been planning and then bring you back into the fold and kind of share with you sort of how this workflow goes. It's again, I haven't solved every problem. So if there's anything I haven't solved when I'm playing around spacing these out, I guess I'll just fill you in on those and we'll go from there in the next video. So I'll, I'll see you in just a second. Okay, this is a little different than other videos. I'm gonna show you guys this in steps. So we're gonna go section by section basically. Over in this corner, we've got our alcohol center. Okay, this is our, our area where we're gonna be using crops to create lots of alcohol. There are two distilleries. And there are a, there is a uh, grain storage located next to each one, directly connected. So grain goes in here, storage can access it. Right, easy. Uh, let me just also get an, a road connection there. Okay, good. Now each one of these, right? The goal is we have to have everything connected to that forklift network too, as well as providing road connections. And since factories can't cross roads, that's where some of my problems come in. So I'm gonna have I'm just showing you this stuff in waves. 
So each one of these grain storages has sort of a wrapping connection that connects it to the forklift network. So these are forklift nodes. I'm going to kind of highlight these so you can see the arrows. These are regular roads. I know it's hard to see them. I'm sorry. These are regular roads. And then these with the arrows are factory connections that go into these little square nodes, right? Uh, so factory connection all the way through here. But the important thing is each distillery has its own grain silo. Okay. Then everything comes over here and we have a forklift garage. This forklift is entirely dedicated to alcohol and getting it into storage, okay? That's the only thing this garage does. These four forklifts are only gonna manage this stuff. So they should never be super bogged down and they shouldn't really need to wait for each other to move things out of it, okay? Then there's a refueling station located over here. So forklifts can easily get refueled. But they can also get, you know, other vehicles like from our distribution center as they're bringing things over here, they can quickly get refueled and go back to work too. So there's access for them there too. Okay, so that's alcohol set up over here. Now I'm going to work on the livestock stuff. All right, I demolished the warehouse because uh, we just got the last shipment going out on that train. And so now it's time to take a look and see what we're going to do in terms of like the spacing for this. We need two cargo stations. Like I said before, one that's dedicated to meat, the other one that's going to be dropping off all the other miscellaneous stuff. And we can have, you know, including meat on that too, if we want to. Uh, and then hopefully the road depot, what I can probably do actually is just have the two, con the two cargo stations hooked up to the same warehouse and then that warehouse hooked up to the road thing too i think there's a there's a chance that all of that could be to be possible so i'm gonna get rid of the uh, substation right there and i think i'm gonna actually delete this road right there too just kind of open this area up a little bit and uh, maybe bring this road back just a tad and then what we're gonna do is i'll, I'll go ahead and connect this yeah we'll just wait just wait uh, so cargo is like super important. The positioning of these stations and stuff, super important to what we want to do. So I think the best course of action here, because the warehouse has more connectors, right? There are uh, five connections here for this. And uh, the regular cargo station, if we take a look at this, has uh, four with a road connection on each side. So what I'm thinking of doing is we'll have a probably a road connection hmm. see that uh, connecting this connecting this to the road is going to be tough because i want to use it for meat storage uh it's all about that spacing man uh so i think the first cargo station could maybe be located here let's go maybe like there with it and then we want the warehouse to be between these two stations i think that's probably how i get get away with this and if I zoom out, I could probably have it be something along the line. Oh, that, that, I wish that window would go away. The one that tells me how many resources it takes. I mean, I can hold control and make it go away, but uh, then I lose the, the connections too. So I have to kind of just play with it. But I, I'm thinking if, if I can somehow, that one's got a road connection on that side. So if we can get a road connection, let's say here, I think right there should be all right not here because well that road connection on that side then maybe maybe this the depot will connect on that other side of the warehouse then hang on where is it's in the road section i think yeah so i just want to see how uh, there's a ui change coming for this game and i cannot wait because like it, there's so much clicking to get to the things you want to get to. It's just, it's really not ideal. So if I position this over on this side, I, I wonder if that can just connect to the warehouse over here. I think so. Let me get a warehouse. And I think if I put the road, it's gotta be on the same side as the road then, right? Yeah, I think we'll, we'll have it be about like, this is tough. Getting this to merge is, is actually pretty difficult. If I if I angle it, maybe that'll help. I think it might. If I put it right about like uh actually. Let's let's try this. This might work better. If I make the road first. Mm, we don't need a road on this side because cargo station. 
Ah, that's that's why I was confused because I'm trying to figure out how to fit it in there and still have this road fit and it doesn't need to. It's on that side. I just said that. Okay. Uh, so warehouse, we can then do it on this side over here then. Yeah, I can have this side connect. It, it really dips me into this side more though. Okay, I'm making a decision. <laughs> no, it doesn't seem like it does it. <laughs> I'm making a decision. We're going to put it here. As long as that road connection can fit. And it looks like it can come straight out from there and then it needs to come down a little bit to give room for the train tracks and then over so about like that and then the train track on this side uh ideally we'd want two tracks um we might need like this sort of like hey wait your turn thing happen from the other station but it's gonna have to that's gonna have to be we're taking up a lot of space in this direction right now and it's got me a little bit kind of eh now, there's a little bit of a nerve going on here. Um, so this warehouse, right? Both of these cargo stations are going to be able to get in there. Um, I still wanted meat storage here, and I, st I still don't think I can have it. Unless I move this stuff over even more. Uh, well. Yeah. Yep. Uh, oh, so close. Okay, I think I'm going to start working backwards uh, just to make sure I have enough room for everything. Working backwards might be the most effective way to do this. So uh, I'm going to take, put this road out about there. Then we're going to curve this around and then hook this up there. So that gives me a road connection for this depot. A little bit of a, yeah, it's got a little bit of a waiting period, but those are four trucks at a time, right? Okay, let's get the meat in first. That way I know that I have enough room. So we'll have a, we'll have meat on this side. And I think we'll go ahead and do it about here. This gives me a road connection too. So right about there. This is gonna be direct connection to that meat. So when we deliver meat to this spot, the trucks will be able to get it from here instead of having to go over, over all the way over here. Good, that's my prerequisite. So let's go ahead and get the cargo station. You gotta space this out right, but the most important thing is that the meat storage will connect to this cargo station too. Uh, so I'm gonna have it go up about, let's say, uh, can you fit, if I put you here, will you play nice? With the uh, with the factory connection, will you play nice? Ah, uh, it's such a pain in the butt. All right, where is cargo station? I mean, ideally, you'd want to see this auto, right? Like, hey, by the way, automatically connected. And that's what I got right here, but yikes. Okay, I mean, I got it right there. So the warehouse is going to have to come up. These are not going to be lined up. I mean, that's there's just no way to line them up. This connection right here uh, is going to have to connect to the warehouse. So we need the warehouse to connect to both. Yeah, it's going to have to be about like that. Uh, see, it won't auto connect to there, but I gotta, I gotta imagine it. Well, this works. That's what we have to do. It's gonna have to be angled. <laughs> oh, this is not nice. It's not, it's not playing nice. It's picking on me. Okay, I'm gonna do it right here. Nope, right there. Okay, and then hopefully the road matches. I think working backwards is uh, the best way to do things. Sometimes in life best way to do it uh i don't need this to have the road connection but if i can get it cool i think i don't need it though we're gonna go like that and then hook it up yay fantastic and you know what i might get lucky here i mean not that i really need it but it does work <laughs> it's a it's not a good road we can do gravel there but it does connect everything fluidly huh so i can have the road connection on this side now i guess Bring this road all the way out and, oops, hang on. Yeah, there we go. Hook it up, arc it out like that. Good. Almost done. And then rail. Now the rail is a very, like, it's a really picky thing. Um, it's not gonna want to play nice with making two tracks through here and all that stuff. But if, if I can get it, I don't think I can. Oh my God, I can. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry to bust your butt. Oh, the reason why it's not playing nice here in my testing is because of this stuff. The electrical lines are causing it to be a problem. But hey, th this worked, huh? 
So we can go like that. We can go like that. And then we can go and branch this off that way to get to the other cargo station too. Now that other cargo station is going to be nasty because again, all of this has to connect to this warehouse plus the cargo station and the rail is going to be in the way. Like these are all the logistical problems that I've been running into on how to get all of this stuff connected and we need the meat storage. So why don't we start with that meat storage first? So we have this meat will go, I think, uh, my God, how am I getting a road connection on this? This one will work, I guess. Oh, no, we need the cargo. It needs to be directly connected to cargo. Oh, boy. All right, cargo station here. Now, where am I going to place you to where I get access to meat and that warehouse? I think maybe we abandon that warehouse. Because this is dedicated for the meat only, right? This is our meat train cargo station. So it's like, I don't really need it. Right? Like, I don't really need it to... Uh, yeah. No, I don't really need it to connect to this warehouse. That's not what this is for. If I focus the task, I can have exactly what I want and more. <laughs> Maybe we do this. Why don't we just have the train come all the way over here? It's really crowded over here already. We got the train come over here. Oh, and then we can merge into the other thing I'm doing. Yes. Okay, that other thing I'm doing. I know. I'm. Uh, this is not flighty, okay? So check this out. This is in testing. So like I've been able to pull it off in testing is what I mean. And I think this is really sick, right? So there's a very small bit of space right here. Like it's a super tiny space. And uh, I think, hang on, is that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's go like that. Okay. Um, this tiny bit of space here, you can fit a track through this and you can fit a track through it in a way that does not make the farm smaller it, it doesn't actually decrease the size of the farm if you do it just right you have to be perfect but if you can be perfect it will work so right through here almost come on now you can do it come on little track I, I want to say it's there, but I, I don't. I don't think it's there. Let's let's come in from this side. It will. It will go through here. I promise. Uh, I just have to get it perfect. It's not perfect. No. Please. Yeah, right there. I think this is it. Is like one little bit of pixel right here. Yes. Okay. So notice how the fence. Right. It's it's kind of gamey, but the fence. It, it's right along the rail line, okay? Not the, like the outside part here. It's like whatever. But if you tell us to build this, it will leave the fence for the field alone and the, the crops will not be interrupted, which is kind of interesting. Um, if, you, if you can build within certain areas and it will just make the crop field smaller. So when you do this, don't think that you can't build something. You can, it it will reduce the size of the crop for you. Um, kind of automatically, if, if you will. Um, I believe we did this up here. Yeah, it did it right here. So this pump jack, this, this pump that I wanted for my oil, I placed it down here and the game didn't like that. And so it made the fence this angle instead which just slightly reduces your yield in that crop. Um, and then sometimes the fields will actually overlap each other and it doesn't matter. The game just handles it, but, uh, but yeah, so we can get a, we can get this through here, which is kind of dirty because then I can go around like this from this side and just hook that up. And again, it doesn't disrupt the, tr the field at all on this side. Well, it looks like it did on that. Well, no. Now that's a straight line. It definitely didn't. So like I can have this this area hooked up to this path, which for the meat train is great because that means that the meat can be picked up and then taken this direction through the capital and out that way and out to wherever we want to go, right? I, I want to hook it up to this side. Uh, but it would be nice to hook it up to this line too and to that line and I can do all of those things right from this little spot. If it's only one train using this, it shouldn't create any conflicts. So if I, if I want to go like this, for example, and just have it meet up there, now I've got a meat train that can go that way and a meat train that can go that way. And then finally, 
Um, we could go this way, and we can hook it up to there. It can it can work. It's not going to be going very fast when it goes through this. So that means it's it's again it's not clean, but it's effective. It does work, and it gets it to where it can go anywhere it wants to go. We can come back from this side, and we can go that way. We can come back from this side, and we can go that way. This one maybe we could change to make it a little bit cleaner, just because it's that angle is kind of messed up. But if I started from if I started from exactly on this point. Yeah, it's not going to work if I do that. So we do kind of have to go off a little bit. A little bit, yeah. But it still works. Oh, I think that one adjusted it. Yeah, that one that one had an impact. So we don't want that one. Um, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to get rid of that. And let's just, let's just build that. And then... Um, Again, we, we can just take this around, and if it lets me connect it anywhere earlier, I'll, I'll take it. No? It'll go out there, but I don't want it to do that. Yeah, this is real squiggly and ugly and disgusting, and no thank you. But you see what I'm doing, though? Like, we can, we can get meat to go anywhere we want with, with this if I hook it up on this side. So I'm, th I'm thinking that's how I want to do this. If I can get that to connect, which maybe if I come from this side, it will work a little bit better. Hmm. It is going to be difficult with me. You saw that it did connect, though, so I'll figure it out later. But that is something we can do. So then I guess what I'm, what I'm trying to do here is figure out how to get trains in to get meat um, and then distribute it everywhere. And it has to be connected to the global rail network to do that. So in addition to needing the factory connection to come through there what I'm considering is another bridge. Another rail bridge. And you can come in through here, come across the rail bridge, which won't interrupt the factory connections, and then the station can be like right here, uh, and then that train rail goes across and around. Um, so that's the cool thing that I was talking about, is that we could get it in there. Um, the other thing I was considering doing is having another uh, grain storage on this side, just for this agri farm. And then we can distribute that with the distribution network too. But unless I'm going to put something here, that doesn't make sense. Which brings me to what I'm going to put here. Uh, yeah, so uh, passenger train was originally the idea for this area. Uh, because then I can get people in here. And because this is connecting to the passenger train rail too, that opens up the possibility to have the meat train and passenger trains using this at the same time. Again, there's, there's a question mark as to whether or not that's a good idea, but uh, there's possibilities here. And uh, in the next video, because this one's getting a little bit long, in the next video, we're going to look a little bit more at those possibilities um, for sure. So I'm going to make sure that all of my roads and rails and factory connections are good. Yep. So they're all in, ready to be constructed. And now it's just a matter of letting everything just happen. There's so much being built on this map right now that... Yeah, it's just, it's just absolutely nuts. Uh, it looks like my construction train is once again confused. Is it because I did something? It's, is it something I said? It's probably this. It's probably all of this. All this, all this new train. Yeah, I bet all of these new rails are going to screw with things because they don't know what to do and it's making new sections for the semaphores and stuff. But uh, I can handle that. So, yeah, alcohol here... Our new cargo rail with a meat storage that can be connected from the road. And then, uh, you know, this distribution network can also maybe move some of the meat over there and, and whatever. We can have some trucks. It is impossible to have agriculture and food to be truckless. It's impossible because trucks have to integrate or they have to in uh, they have to collect the crops from the fields like crops the trucks are the only thing that can do that um so you might as well have your trucks deliver it directly to grain storage um so instead of having it be you know one central hub and then the forklifts or anything else just distributes it everywhere instead of it being that now we have the trucks that are coming from the fields distributing it to the different uh grain silos and stuff so uh these this one will have like half of the silos this one will have the other half of the silos and then forklifts will distribute as well all of that stuff can happen. So that's what we're hoping to do. 
I'm going to keep playing with positioning here for me and try to figure out exactly where this cargo storage is going to go. Uh, and then we will continue this and wrap this up and have our food network, quote unquote, uh, ready to go uh, at the end of the next video. So thank you very much for watching, everybody. I do appreciate you. Please like the video. It helps me out. You can subscribe. That, somewhat, that kind of helps me out, too. It helps you out more than it helps me out, I think, just because then you know when the videos are. Um, and uh, I do appreciate you. So take it easy. We'll see you. Bye-bye.